Welcome to the Love and Lattes podcast, a coffee lover's guide to good vibes, books, rom-coms, and everything in between. Now grab some coffee and let's get chatting. Hey everyone, I'm Catherine Center, author of Hello Stranger, and you're listening to the Love and Lattes podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today, Catherine. You are a busy gal. You are super successful. Um, For people who are listening, I'm sure there's plenty of people that will listen to this that are already fans of you and know your work, but you wrote The Lost Husband, as well as Happiness for Beginners, both of which have been adapted, which is obviously a sign of success on top of many other novels. So I really appreciate your time today. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for thinking of me. Oh, absolutely. And I just want to say, like, even looking at your backdrop right now and then your website, just and then the book cover, I mean, your colors and just everything is so vibrant and lively. I do like colors, you know, they're really joyful. And I'm always kind of like wandering around sort of collecting joy, like trying to sort of it's like I've got a little basket and I'm just trying to grab everything that's cheerful and put it in there. So, yeah, I really love bright colors for sure. Oh, it's so fun. Do you have a favorite color? Uh, you know, red was my favorite color forever and ever and ever. And then recently I've kind of uh, sidestepped over to pink. Okay. So I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, anywhere on that little spectrum going back and forth. I love them all. Oh, yes. It's so fun. I just, I mean, looking at your whole setup right now, I just love it. It gives off such good vibes. So it sets the tone for the day. Thank you. It's kind of fun to either at the beginning of the interview or the end, kind of do a quick, like, look at your journey specifically that led you to this moment where you probably sit back and you're like, I cannot believe this is my life. Um, Is there like a specific moment in like your whole career or like beginnings that kind of set everything off for you? Yes. (laughs) When I was in the sixth grade, I was very awkward and very miserable And I had two best friends who were also awkward and also miserable. And we got this idea that we should write novels about the 1980s boy band, Duran Duran. And we should cast ourselves as the main characters in the novel. So we basically wound up writing, I mean, we kind of invented fan fiction in a way. And we basically wrote love stories, you know, and, but we had so much fun, you know, it was so much fun to write these stories, we would sort of suffer through the school week as you can only suffer when you're in middle school. And then on the weekends, we would get together and have these sleepovers and we'd put on our PJs and we'd pile into somebody's bed and we'd open up our novels and we would read them to each other in installments. And as miserable as sixth grade was, writing those stories was just kind of magical. It was like my first taste of how stories can save you You know, it was my first taste of how stories can change your life and give you things to look forward to and lift your mood and inspire you and change your thinking and, you know, just make things more fun. And so from then on, I just like, I mean, that was really the moment, you know, I just sort of tasted this sort of nectar of fiction and I wanted to figure out how it worked and I wanted to to sort of study the power of it and learn how to wield that power, you know, for good. And that was age 12. It's been many decades and I've been obsessed with stories ever since. That's such a fun story of your story. (laughs) I feel like just hearing you say that would, that would be just like the uh, most entertaining television show or movie out there. Just to see these girls doing that. I I just love that. (laughs) We had a lot of fun. We did. Oh, that sounds like it. I mean, we talked about favorite colors. Do you have a favorite Duran Duran song? Oh, Rio. I think just the whole album. I weirdly found myself listening to it. I mean, I'm not still like listening to Duran Duran every day. You know, it was kind of a phase that I went through, but I did listen to it during the pandemic quite a lot. And I found it very comforting and sort of, you know, uplifting. It's like very sweet, lovely music. It is nice. Um, They're a great band. So I just, what a cool um, journey. Just what a fun starting point. Just forever. You've been doing this forever and it just continues. Obviously, I see the lovely book cover behind you for Hello Stranger that was released this summer. Um, For people who haven't uh, discovered your book yet, do you want to tell everyone like a little synopsis of it? Yeah. So it's my 10th novel, actually, which is sort of mind blowing. And it is, it's a romantic comedy. I write sort of like I guess we, you could call them like deep romantic comedies. So they're they're 
there's always hopefully a really swoony love story, but then there's also stuff that the characters have to struggle with and figure out and ideas they have about how life works that they have to rethink. So there's always like struggle and wisdom on the one half and then the other half is like love. So in Hello Stranger, uh, the main character is an artist and she winds up getting this condition that's a real condition called face blindness where she can't see faces properly like she it's like they're puzzle pieces and she can't snap them together and this throws her whole life into chaos she's a, a portrait artist so obviously she needs to be able to see faces and she's just placed in a contest so she actually needs to be painting like the best portrait of her life in this moment while everything's upside down she kind of winds up unexpectedly falling for two different guys at the same time she cannot see either of their faces but she has definite opinions on both of them and so she winds up in this sort of very unusual situation there's a lot going on but hopefully it is fun and swoony and moving and full of lots of like wisdom and and laughs there should be a lot of banter in there it's an interesting spin on like your traditional rom-com there's a little more to it like you're saying um it's a deep like there's layers to it that a lot of times you don't get on these rom-coms that are very just like uh light and fun and nothing serious but I like that there's kind of a mix of things going on with this you know I think some people just really want it to be just light and I totally get that but for me you know I think the only compass that you can really follow as a writer is what you love as a reader and I you know, if I had a free Saturday and a fuzzy blanket and a hot cup of tea, like the kind of story that I will always pick to read is one where the main character falls in love for sure. That's the fun part as far as I'm concerned. But I also like to see characters struggle. You know, I let, I love stories about how people get knocked down and have to figure out how to get back up. And so my stories always do have, you know, hardship in them and sorrow, but they always end well. You know, people are always better on the other side for their struggles. Like we will always end on a hopeful, positive note. You know, I'm never going to run the main characters over with a bus in the final chapter. Like, you know, I'm not here to make anybody feel depressed or hopeless. I'm here to kind of lift us all up the best I can. But I usually do start with some struggle because um, I like the wisdom that you can only get from sort of facing hard stuff in life. So yeah, I want, I want wisdom and I also want like swooniness. I want like half and half of that. So that's kind of where my books end up. I like that. Like maybe some, like we're saying the latter rom-coms are like kind of rolling hills, but yours have more like peaks and valleys, which kind of draws you in more because you're, it, it makes it seem like a little more invested in like what the outcome will be. So that's awesome. Yeah. I think they're kind of intense, you know, and it's like big feelings, you know, it's all the feelings, you know, and I, that's what I like in a story. So that's what I'm always trying to do for other people when I'm writing. And of course, like you're saying, you you want to write what you like. So I'm sure the passion comes through in that sense, because it's kind of like, it's something you really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's what you have to do. You can't just write from the outside, you have to write from the inside. And that's what guides you to sort of the best story that you can do. Oh, absolutely. And kind of this particular story, because she can't really place their faces, it's kind of like, it's not as superficial uh, as what's on the outside is more like getting to know them. Like I know, I'm sure you've seen um, About Time with Rachel McAdams and how they first meet. And it's like in the dark, they can't see each other's faces. It's all based on the conversation. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. This is that same idea. You know, I had never heard of face blindness and maybe, maybe three or four years ago, I heard a a podcast called This American Life, where they were telling love stories for Valentine's Day. And one of the love stories was about a woman who fell in love with a guy who had this real condition. He had a slightly different kind than my main character wound up with in the book. But um, it really stuck in my head. You know, I just thought, wow, what would it be like to be in love with someone who couldn't, you know, remember your face? And, and, where that's just not the thing, right? That's not the thing that they're that they're attaching to about you. Because I think for most of us, 
that's really the main thing that we kind of think of when we think of a person we love. But if you have this condition, you have to find other ways. It's it's haircuts. It's, you know, gait, you know, the way people walk. It's the clothes they like to wear. It's their voices. And I loved the idea of like, what would it be like to fall in love with somebody through these different sort of portals into who they are? There's so much more to a person than just what their face looks like. That's what the story tells you. Right. Yeah. Lots of layers there. That's awesome. And then, of course, I, I think that I read the audiobook is narrated by Broadway actress Patty Murin. Is that right? Okay. I was like, that's so cool. He, uh, Patty Murin, I know her a little bit. Um, I met her through Jody Picot. Um, Jody Picot is a big um, theater person. You know, she really loves theater and she knows Patty through that world. And um, Patty also narrated another book of mine called The Bodyguard. And uh, yeah, I'm madly in love with her. She's wonderful. I actually interviewed her when I was writing The Bodyguard because one of the characters in The Bodyguard is famous. And so I was trying to get a peek behind the curtain for like, what's it like to be famous? You know, what what is it really like back there on the other side of the famous wall, you know? And I didn't know that many famous people, but I knew her a little bit. So I reached out to her and asked if she'd be willing to let me interview her. And she very graciously was. And so we had this sort of wonderful conversation where she told me about acting and fame and what it's all really like. And so there I was, you know, a year later writing the acknowledgments to the bodyguard when I got a message from Patty that she was going to be reading the audiobook. So I was pretty excited. That's so cool. So this is kind of like a revolving thing with the both of y'all getting to work together again in this way. Yeah, I love her. And actually, I went on book tour this summer when Hello Stranger came out and um, Patty came to see me in St. Louis. And I got to see her on the stage. I got to give her a big hug. And we talked a little bit about, you know, acting life and audiobook life. So yeah, it's it, I feel very lucky. Oh, absolutely. That's a really neat partnership and friendship you've created with her. Um, I mean, have you listened or do, have you ever done this? Listen to like the audiobook of your book and kind of like get the actor's take on your words? Yes, I have listened to many of the audiobook narrators over the years. And um, some are hard for me um, because, you know, it, it's always a little weird for me because I hear the stories very much in my own voice. Like, when I read it, it's it sounds a certain way. The whole process of writing is incredibly sort of auditory for me. Like I hear these characters talking or I hear the narrator sort of telling the story and I type it down the best I can. When the story's really cooking, it's like taking dictation. Um, and so it's so auditory for me that when I hear other people reading the stories, they're rhythms are different. The, you know, parts of the word that they accent are different. The way that, you know, their pauses are different. It just doesn't sound like it does in my head. That said, it's wonderful in other ways. You know, Patty Mirren is magnificent. She's charming. And she does all sorts of things to the story that I would never have thought to do. Um, there's also another audiobook narrator that um, did several of my books named Therese Plummer, and she's also just magnificent. I mean, she just like knows how to just pull this emotion out of these moments. So it's fun. It, it it's kind of helps me see the stories from a different angle or from like a deeper view. So yeah, it is, it's, it's, it's really fun to see different versions of them. And the th same thing holds true for movies as well. Like the movies are not exactly the books, but they it's so fun to see a sort of different interpretation. I think of it kind of like jazz standards, you know, like listening to some lovely jazz song by Ella Fitzgerald is not the same thing as Frank Sinatra's version, which is, you know, not the same thing as Anita O'Day, but it's still the same song. It's just got these different ways of interpreting it, which is really fun to hear. Oh, absolutely. And if if someone maybe prefers listening versus reading, this is a way they can still get exposed to your writing and your stories. So I'm so glad audiobooks have kind of boomed lately, oh, yeah. that industry, just more people get to hear your work. So that's always a good thing. Yeah, me too. I love audiobooks. I, I, I listen to them a lot. They are a really great way to get reading done when you are washing dishes or doing any of the many boring things that life makes us all do. If you're not listening to Duran Duran, you can listen to audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. Is there any like plan in the future to maybe adapt Hello Stranger? Because I would love to see 
I can imagine just like the movie version of this, how they might show through her eyes, the faces of the two men, you know, that would be really interesting. It would be, I would love to see it. There are no plans at the moment, um, but everything's kind of slowed down right now in that world because of the writer strike and the actor strike. So there's not much really going on over there. Not a lot of deals being made at the moment. There are a lot of fun ways that you could play with it all, right? And kind of put us into her perspective and help us see what it's like. Um, And I would love to see it because it's one thing to try to imagine it. And it's really another thing to see it depicted. The best description that I've seen for what it's like, or the one that helped me the most as I was really doing like a lot of research and trying to figure out what it would be like kind of from the inside out is to look at a face upside down. Because if you look at a face upside down, you can tell it's a face. You know, you can see that there are two eyes there and there's a nose there and there's a mouth, but it, but it doesn't make any sense to your brain as a face, you know, like you can tell it's a face, but you can't really recognize it. And if you take famous people and turn them upside down and look at their faces, you can't always tell who they are. Most of the time you can't. Um, And then you flip it over and you're like, oh, it's Betty White, you know, or like whoever it is, you know? So uh, it's really interesting. Your, your brain just doesn't, it's like the pieces aren't in the right template for your brain to know what to do with it. It's a really specialized area of the brain. And if anything isn't working in that area, your brain just kind of is like, well, I, I give up, you know, it just doesn't know what to do. Wow. That's so fascinating. What a, what an interesting um, kind of element you added to the story that definitely sets it apart from other rom-com novels out there. I just want to congratulate you on this. This is amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, it's a little different. The one thing I'll say is there's actually two, I'll, I can keep going. I could talk on face blindness all night. I did so much research and it was so interesting, but there are two different kinds. One kind is like a perception thing. And that's what this main character has. And you usually get that from like an injury to the brain, but there's another kind that's developmental that people have had their entire lives. And that uh, a lot of times people don't even know that they have it because they just think that's how everybody is. Cause it's how it's always been. And that is not a perception problem. Those folks can see the face that they're interacting with in the moment just fine. It's a memory issue. Like when they turn away and then come back, they don't remember, like they can't recognize that it was the face they were just looking at. And it varies from person to person, but yeah. So there's two different kinds and um, it's really interesting stuff. Wow. I bet a lot of people will kind of do some research of their own after reading this to kind of familiarize themselves with it. There is actually a great website called faceblind.org where you can go and take tests. So if you think that you might have trouble recognizing faces or remembering them, um, you can go and take these facial recognition tests and they will, they will tell you like where you fall compared to the rest of the world. Wow. Maybe this will help some people out that were wondering. Um, That's so interesting. I think it actually has the potential to do that because I think sometimes if you don't know you have a thing, um, you can be hard on yourself about it. You know, you can think, oh, I'm just not good at remembering people or I wasn't paying attention. You know, you can you can sort of beat yourself up about it. And if you know that you just have a perception issue, then you can give yourself a break, like be a little more compassionate with yourself. I mean, I think for some people it is quite life-changing to kind of get the diagnosis and find out that this wasn't, that they weren't trying, you know, it was just how their particular brain happens to work. Yeah. A lot of times you just can't help what happens. Um, it just, and it's life and you just have to, to live with it the best you can live your best life despite any kind of, um, I guess it's, I guess it's defined as a disability. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not actually sure there, but I, but what I will say is I do think that Lots of people in life in general, right, in the world have stuff that they, I mean, we all have things that we struggle with. And part of what makes life interesting and fun is like figuring out ways around all of our our limitations and, you know, proclivities. So I think that's one of the things that, that Sadie, the main character in this book is trying to do. She's trying to figure out, okay, I can't do this thing that I always relied on. Um, how can I solve this another way, right? How can I find another way of seeing the world and another way of seeing the people around me? And so it's kind of, it's fun to watch how she, it kind of becomes this opportunity for her to kind of look at the world 
through a different lens, right? Through different eyes than she's used to. And she learns a lot of things in the process. Oh, that's a great lesson um, for everyone to kind of maybe how you view things, you can view it differently, different perspectives and um, ends up resulting in something really wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I think about that a lot, you know, that the framework that you use for thinking about something can help you, you know, if you can frame it in a way that helps you see the upsides that can be beneficial. And if you frame it in a way of like, oh, my life is ruined, which is what I'm always tempted to do. You know, I always start with my life is ruined and then I have to kind of rethink, Um, you know, that's a different kind of framework, but the frame that you apply to whatever it is that you're trying to think about or solve or go through really does kind of impact your experience of that thing. And I think that's really interesting stuff about, about humans. Yes, humans are so interesting. Um, and you as a writer just discover all of these different facets of personalities and it just is so amazing. I, of course, I'm going to link Hello Stranger along with like your website and social media accounts so everyone can follow you and purchase um, the book and listen to the audiobook while you're at it. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, of course. Um, do you have time for like a two minute rapid fire question session? Of course. Okay, what's the last show you binge watched? <laughs> well, this is is this rapid fire? I'm so bad at rapid fire. I'm so talkative. I have been watching um Korean TV since the pandemic. Um the, Korea has a really fantastic rom-com, like romantic comedy world where they do these amazing romantic comedy TV shows. So the last one that I uh that I watched was actually a a Korean drama. Um, and it was called doom at your service. And it's a really hard thing plot wise to explain, but it was very charming and it had, you know, again, one of the reasons that these shows appeal to me is that they're very romantic and swoony and they also have big, big emotions, you know, just huge emotions, life and death, death stakes, um, as these characters get sort of tossed around on these stormy seas of emotion. So anyway, the last, last show I binge watched was a Korean drama. That is really cool. Uh, something really to fun. look into if you want something maybe a little different. <laughs> Email me anytime. I'll send you a list of 20. You'll never be bored again. <laughs> so much fun. Sounds good. I know what I'm doing for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, that's easy. Chocolate chip mint. Oh my goodness. I tell you what, I always say this. If I had a dime for every time someone said that, I would have like a jar full of dimes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's such a, I mean, you just, there's nothing about it that's not amazing. Yeah, you can't go wrong with it. Um, And what is your go-to coffee drink? Oh, well, just like plain old coffee, like hot coffee. I'm not really an iced coffee person with full fat, heavy cream in it. Like really like very like fluffy and creamy. Uh, You have to have that or else it's like watery and thin and it's no good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little fussy about that. I mean, I'll do half and half if I'm forced to, but um, yeah, on a good day, it's definitely full fat, heavy cream. That sounds really nice. Um, And then finally, where's a place you'd like to visit that you have not yet traveled to? Oh my gosh, so many. You know, ever since the pandemic, I've just been, felt like desperate to go traveling. Um, So where do I want to go? I'd love to see the fjords. Um, I'd love to go to this beautiful island off the coast of Korea called Jeju Island. I've never been to Switzerland. I'd love to go to Germany. I'm a quarter German and I've never been. Oh my gosh, a million places. I'd love to go to Brazil. I'd love to go to Antarctica someday and go check it out. My adorable mother, who's a big world traveler, went to Antarctica a few years ago and uh, her pictures were astonishing. And ever since then, I've kind of been like, hmm, I'm going to put that on my list for someday. That was many oh. more places than you wanted, probably. No, I mean, you have a long list of different locations you'd like to explore, and I hope you get to check them off your list. <laughs> me too, me too. Um, Thank you so much for talking with me today, Catherine. It has been so much fun. Oh, it's been great talking with you too. All right, well, it was so nice to meet you, and I just loved uh, getting to visit with you, and I'm so grateful to you for making the time. So thank you. This was super, super fun. Oh, good. I'm glad you had a good time. Well, I, have, I hope you have a great rest of your what day are we Wednesday and stay cool yeah. out there. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thanks so much super nice to meet you. Okay. Thank you. you. Too. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of all the new episodes. 
I truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much for listening to the Love and Lattes podcast. Have a great day. Thank you.